Today on Fresno State Focus, we share some tips to keep yourself safe while cycling. Then we discuss one father's mission to bring awareness to drug abuse in the name of his son. Plus, we get an inside look at the man behind local favorite, the Cedar Cowboy. Fresno State Focus starts now. And welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Natalia Mendoza. And I'm Rene Rodriguez. Fresno State will no longer be getting millions of dollars each year. Measure E did not pass for Fresno County. Adori Berzamina is live at the Industrial Tech Building to tell us the impact this has on students. Adori? Now, a little background on Measure E. The quarter cent sales tax proposal would have raised one and a half billion dollars for Fresno State over the next 25 years. And that money would have gone towards buildings such as the one I'm at right here that you can see the wood and the paint peeling off and it could really use the upholding. Now, if you go around campus and ask students at Fresno State, what exactly is Measure E? You're going to get a lot of different answers. I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that before. I don't want to be interviewed. But here's what a few people had to say about Measure E. I was in support of Measure E. I think that a lot of the money that's funneling in through the CSUs is just not enough. And obviously, based off of the states of our classrooms, you know, the speech arts building flooding earlier this or last semester, I think that we need a lot of that money and we're not seeing it. I'm not sure why it didn't pass. It should have passed. And with about 80% of Fresno State graduates staying within the community, the idea is to have Fresno State alumni pay and push forward for future Fresno State students. Here at the Industrial Tech Building, with all the wood falling off, Adore Berzamina, Fresno State Focus. We are starting to get a clearer look at what and who voters support thanks to Super Tuesday. California was one of 15 states that participated in the presidential primary elections this year. And this year's Super Tuesday was especially important for Republican candidate Nikki Haley. Even though down in the polls to former President Donald Trump, Haley needed to win Super Tuesday to stay in the race. How many more times do we have to lose before we start to say maybe Donald Trump is the problem? After receiving only 89, 89 delegate votes, Haley decided to suspend her campaign congratulating but not supporting Donald Trump. We are headed to a rematch of 2020 presidential election between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Bicycle accidents happen almost every day. Here are safety tips for students who ride their bicycles and drivers so you can both be safe on and around campus. Cyclist awareness can help prevent crashes on the road. But what about on campus? There has been an uptick in the number of bikes, scooters, and skateboard accidents, according to the Fresno State Parking Manager. So the key to staying safe is planning ahead. Bells, helmets, bright clothes, and reflectors are the most effective ways to prevent accidents. Seth Monty, a bicycle mechanic, shares tips on how to gear up when cycling on the roads. Always wear a helmet. Um, I know, you know, that's a big one and people don't always like to wear them, but helmets can, can save lives. Corey Rudolph, a grad student, passes through campus on his way home from his weekly movie day at Campus Point. Here are some precautions Rudolph takes when riding on campus. Make sure my brakes are working on campus so I can stop whenever I need to. There's so many students on scooters nowadays. They usually are riding pretty fast around campus, so I usually watch out for them. As many accidents tend to happen right here in the most popular place on campus where there's a lot of foot traffic, I'm standing here at the wheels off area where we're not supposed to use bicycles, scooters, skateboards, or roller rollerblades beyond this point. But as you can see, we have a lot of people passing by on scooters. According to calbike.com, bicyclists traveling on the road slower than traffic must use a bike lane to prevent any injuries. Be cautious of cyclists. Be courteous. Please be mindful of these tips to avoid any accidents on or around campus. Over 100,000 cyclists are hurt in crashes in the U.S. every year. The next time you're on the road, on two or four tires, keep these tips in mind. Scooter racks are filling up on campus. More students are riding scooters to school every day. Until recently, the only racks available were bike and skateboard racks. 
Many teachers don't let students bring their scooters inside classrooms because of the small spaces. Kamoni Reem says scooters are an easy target for thieves. I heard like last semester it was like some lady going around stealing them and stuff. So I was always like cautious, so I'm always like looking back instead of looking back. To ensure the safety of your scooter, buy a lock that can attach to the racks. You can find these racks everywhere on campus, but mainly in the front of the library and inside the Peace Garden. Red light runners and car crashes have been on the rise in Fresno. The Fresno Bee reported that Fresno is home to the worst drivers in California because of those crashes. Efrain Mata takes us to a dangerous intersection and tells us how one man is trying to make a difference. One minute, 22-year-old Amaya Chanel was alive, and the next, she was not. A red light runner tragically ended her life at the intersection of Bryant and Shepard last April. Uh, that intersection is really like Russian roulette. It's really a taking a chance every time you go through that intersection. This intersection is notorious for its red light runners and car crashes. People zip through here all the time trying to beat the light. And Maya Chanot's death last year led to changes in traffic laws. Uh, I, a lot of people run the lights, so you kind of have to slow down and make sure everybody stops. For a while, it was about once a month we'd get a wreck. Red light runners happen daily. That happens all the time. Dan Wells is co-owner of the Front Roulette YouTube channel. He says there are ways to make intersections like this one safer in the future. Our suggestion is to change it like they did at Palm and, and uh, um, Knees. Uh, there's a flashing yellow light for those people knowing that there's still traffic could be coming. It, it might have a green light, but they at least have a caution. The city of Fresno recently lowered the speed limit in this area from 50 to 45 to slow drivers down. We think that we may have contributed to helping to slow down these accidents that are taking place. Well says that lowering the speed limit and increasing awareness has led to fewer accidents at this intersection. However, red light runners are still prevalent. At Brian and Shepard, Ephraim Mata, Fresno State Focus. From 2018 to 2022, Fresno averaged over 140 fatal crashes per year, up by 66% since 2018. Fresno State's Black Student Success Initiative hosted many events throughout Black History Month, but none more difference-making than CARE Day. I went out to see how these students volunteered to make a positive community impact. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you. A lot of positivity during Black History Month at Fresno State. One of the events that took place was CARE Day, a day of supporting the local unhoused communities. In partnership with the Amendola Student Cupboard, students engaged in community service by handing out 200 care packages. There was fruit, first aid kits, and other things to help people stay warm and dry. Women's Gender Studies major Chrysalyn Jacobs loves to give back. It feels great, honestly. You see a lot of homelessness around in Fresno, and honestly, this can impact the community a lot. This can help a lot of our homelessness. You know, just the little things matter, you know, just to show that we care. Students met near downtown Fresno, where they began the journey of walking the streets and handing out the care packages. Unhoused communities have been the subject of recent local government efforts to provide affordable housing and end chronic street homelessness, something that these volunteers say is essential. Throughout the pandemic, the city of Fresno saw some of the highest rent increases in the entire nation. And the way that that impacts people in a city where over 40% of residents are renters, um, protecting those who are unhoused is crucial. The Black Student Success Initiative was successful that day, and it's always great to see our students contributing to our local communities in a beneficial way. Everyone involved in this endeavor should be proud. Coming up on Fresno State Focus. We get to see how cross-cultural gender center barbershop has been impacting many young men navigate college. Valley skies throughout the week. I'll have your focus on weather coming up next. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. In 
inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley. And this year, we're doing it for you. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Good afternoon, I'm Ray Franco with your Focus on Weather. Take a look at us, the sky came right in front of the Resonate Student Union. You can see there's a bright, sunny out there and there's a clouds coming through, through our way. Take a look at our national satellite radar. You can see there's a, a severe storm. If you're playing out, uh, going to the, around the East Coast, uh, be aware of that because most likely your flight's gonna be delayed. And taking a look at our Western satellite radar, you can see there's a, a little bit of rainstorm coming through the Los Angeles area, but if you're traveling down to Los Angeles, uh, be, be aware of that because uh, there might be a severe raining on your way. And take a look at today's high. Uh, if you're stocked in Modesto, you're in around the mid to, high, mid to low 60s. And take a look at our, take a look at our by, by of Fresno, uh, you're down in the mid to low 60s. If you're in the mountain areas, the Shaver Lake and Mariposa, you're in the mid 50s. Mary Perry said you're 57, Mary Lake, you're 45. And take a look at tomorrow's lows. You can see uh, there's, a, there's a little bit, you're in the 40s down to low 40s. And if you're in an upper area, you're into the mid 40s. And take a look at our extended look, outlook. Uh, there, we, there we go, air, air quality. You, there's a see, there's a, you're in the gray area, most of the part, Kern County, St. San Joaquin, you're in the yellow. And take a look at our extended look, uh, you're, take a look at that sea. We're in the good weather, partially cloudy, mostly cloudy. And it, if you take a look at our blossom area, it's a perfect day to go there tomorrow and Saturday. And that's your focus on weather. Back to you. Are you prepared to help someone who is dying from a fentanyl overdose? I sat down with Jim Horton, a dad whose son died from a drug overdose one year after graduating from high school. Jim wants to make sure his son's death was not in vain. Most importantly, if I could let Zach know how much that I love him, regardless of the challenges he was facing. This is a harsh reality families across the country are going through. Last year, the CDC reported over 105,000 deaths in the U.S. were due to a drug overdose. Jim Horton is the president of the Zachary Horton Foundation formed in 2020 after the death of his son, Zachary. Since Zach's passing, the Hortons have worked to help educate about opioid addiction and how to help those struggling. Don't keep it a secret and don't, and don't be ashamed of that. And that's, again, therein lies that stigma. Sometimes when people hide their addiction, a medical emergency may come as a shock. If someone is in a medical emergency, you can use Narcan to revive them. Now, Narcan can be used as a nasal spray. You can then do CPR on the person and then help revive them. If you use Narcan, you can save a life. If you're confused about Narcan or how to use it, there are instructions inside of the box. We want to particularly uh, make aware of the availability of Narcan here on uh, campus. You can come to the SHCC, the Student Health and Counseling Center, and we do have Narcan uh, for students to pick up. Free Narcan is available to all students who come in and ask for it. Reporting at Fresno State, Emily Crabtree, Fresno State Focus. And the Zachary Horton Foundation offers Narcan training. To find out more, you can head to their website or go to their Instagram at the Zachary Horton Foundation. The Fresno State Library is having its annual Race to One Million Visits campaign. When going to the front desk, you can receive the passport bookmark that you can fill out by going to areas inside the library, like the Circulation Front Desk, Discover E, the Learning Center, and the Teacher Resource Center. Mallory Crow says that despite the campaign starting last month, they are already at 800,000 visitors, needing 200,000 more to achieve the goal. 
the best way to keep up on that is for students and community members to keep coming into the library, checking out our services, coming to the gallery for cool events like this. Just keep coming through those doors every day. It makes a huge difference. When the library reaches its goal, the one millionth visitor will receive special recognition. There is a place on campus we're talking about the new Tekken game, Taylor Swift in the NFL, and why Kanye West is so crazy, all play a role in men's empowerment. Barbershop Talk has provided this space for these open discussions for about three years now. Adori Berzamina got to see what all the Barbershop Talk is about. Barbershop Talk and its unique discussions are helping build up young men as they go through college and life. It was first started during the pandemic by Dr. Raymar Henderson, a former Fresno State professor and faculty member. Desaline Yamasu, current professor at Fresno City College, explains the idea behind Barbershop Talk. It's really a safe space for black men to get together and uh, to talk about, you know, things that are going on in our lives, uh, you know, things that are affecting us, and, uh, and honestly, tell them why. The topics talked about while winding down can be anything. Politics, sports, even history lessons are all on the table. It's just a whole bunch in like one conversation, one atmosphere of conversation. And here, barbershop talk is like that, but with minus the haircut. This is not only an atmosphere similar to a barbershop, but also a community on campus. Josh Sexel recently joined Barbershop Talk this semester and shares the importance of having a space like this. All that anger, depression, fear, anxiety, whatever it is that's running through my mind and going through my veins and making me feel uncomfortable, if y'all need a spot to go to just to vent or talk about anything, Barbershop Talk is the move. So while you don't need to get a haircut to take part in the Barbershop Talk at Fresno State, the community, camaraderie, and connections you built are better than even the freshest haircut. At J. Royals Barbershop, Adore Berzamina, Fresno State Focus. Barbershop Talk meets at 3 every Wednesday afternoon in the Harambe Room at the Cross-Cultural Gender Center inside the Frank Thomas Building. According to Feeding America, nearly one in five people in Fresno County face food insecurity in 2021. That's down from one in four in 2020. With inflation and the cost of living going up, some are forced to decide between paying their PG&E bill or buying food. CalFresh is a program that helps connect students to nutritional food for free. So that's a pro uh, problem for students specifically since they are limited on funds. So CalFresh is a way for them to purchase food and not have to think about where the next meal is coming from. CalFresh just partnered with the College of Social Sciences and approved 13 more programs for eligibility. They're also hosting nutrition classes this week and next week. To find out more about eligibility or how to apply for the program, visit Fresno State's food security project, CalFresh Online. Have you noticed a cowboy around campus? Have you heard country music coming from the corner of Cedar and Shaw? You may have run into Chris Ambrise. He's known as the Cedar Cowboy. Cesar Maya had the chance to speak with a curious cattle wrangler and figure out what he's been doing around campus. Students at Fresno State have been hearing about the Cedar Cowboy for almost a year now. Many on campus believed he might even be a myth made up by fellow classmates. Andrea Rosales says she has seen him around campus, but doesn't know much about him. I see him a lot, especially when I come to school, but I've always been confused as to if he attends Fresno State or who he is. After finding him on Cedar, I learned that the Cedar Cowboy is a student, just not at Fresno State. His name is Chris Ambries, and he's a 16-year-old student at Hoover High School. What Chris does most days after school is he heads down to the corner of Cedar and Shaw with his boombox playing his country music roaring, and he says hi to anyone that's willing to talk to him, whether it be in their car or just walking down the street. Chris says that he originally started dressing the way he does because he admired his stepdad and wanted to be like him. Um, I just wanted to try a new style, like, so I just started dressing like this. As for the music. But I just got obsessed with music, so I just wanted to just to have fun and come out here and just do my thing, share my music with people. 
Chris plans on continuing to go to the corner of Cedar and Shaw, at least until he gets to college or finds something else that keeps him busy. You can catch Chris most days after school, and if you're ready to talk, he's ready to listen. At the corner of Cedar and Shaw, Cesar Maya, Fresno State Focus. Cesar learned that Chris loves meeting new people, so if you find yourself on Cedar, wave and say hi while he goes from corner to corner. Coming up in sports, a new sports club is bringing students together with their personal records. Plus, we take a look at how the Diamond Dogs match up this weekend against undefeated UC Irvine. Stay tuned for sports with Ricky Oaks. I got the ball that's spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that ball dog spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head to say. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, down in my toes, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit down in my toes, hey, down in my toes to stay. I got that bulldog spirit up in my head, deep in my heart, down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit all over me, all over me to stay. I got that bulldog spirit deep in my heart. What's poppin'? I'm Ricky Oaks with your Focus on Sports. There is a new club on campus that is putting the work and effort into their strength for their big national meet day. Ray Franco has a story. At the Iron Office Gym in Northeast Fresno, a group of Fresno State students are putting a test to their strength at the national level event. This is our um, biggest meet and this is our second meet as a big team. It all started with a group of friends with an idea of starting a club to now one of the strongest collegiate teams in the state. The last meet we did, uh, we competed at Western Collegiate Cup. Uh, the team did very good, everyone showed out. Uh, we got second place out of all the teams. Powerlifting is a strength sport that consists of three lifts, squat, bench, and deadlift. We definitely surpassed my expectations and reached a lot of people and we're hoping to, to get bigger and reach more people. Everyone is allowed to join the club. Honestly, it's because my boyfriend does it, but <laughs> um, I started, I just joined this past year. Um, I, this is my first competition ever, so we're excited to see how it goes. Powerlifting is a competitive you know, sport and I just wanted to try it. I always said I was going to try it and then, you know, FSPL really kind of put into perspective and I was already competing for my first meet and it just all aligned perfectly. According to the students, it is not just a club, it is a community. I originally started powerlifting just to, you know, help help with my mental state and it just, it really helps a lot. And having like a community to help you along that has the same experiences as you, it's, it's, it's comforting. For more information on how you get involved with Fresno State Powerlifting, head to the Instagram at FresnoState.Powerlifting. Reporting in Northeast Fresno, Ray Franco, Fresno State Focus. Their next competition is on March 17th at the Reno Ballroom in downtown Reno, Nevada. If you want to find out how much our very own Ray can bench press, head to his ex account at underscore Ray Franco. The Diamond Dogs are hoping again this week for a two game set against number 19 UC Irvine tomorrow and Friday. The team will wrap up the weekend by hosting Columbia on Saturday and Sunday. The Dogs got the bats going over the weekend, taking two of three from San Diego State to open up Mountain West play. They were led by Mountain West Player of the Week, Eddie Saldivar. The second baseman drove in five more runs last night in the Dogs' 9-8 walk-off victory over the University of Pacific. Over the weekend, Jack Anker was lights out on the mound with the help of his teammates and coaches. 
just attacking hitters, really. Um, trusting Buck's game plan and just going after him. You know, um, I have the privilege of seeing the first two starters go out this um, really every weekend and just learning from them. And Anchor earned his third win of the season on Sunday while also being named Conference Pitcher of the Week. The sophomore from Tulare has allowed just two runs this season through 20 innings pitched while also striking out 21 batters. Baseball season is underway at Fresno State and Juan Diamond Dog has the crowd's hopes up this year. Everyone's looking to see what Murph Gray will do for the Bulldogs after a remarkable freshman year. David Victor has more on number 15. Fans are excited to see the Diamond Dogs spring into action. But there's one player who's got the crowd fired up since last year. Number 15, Murph Gray. Lots of expectations surround Murph Gray after being named Freshman of the Year in the Mountain West last season. Obviously, um, you know his physical, physical nature and how he, uh, you know, can approach the game physically. But honestly, just the way he works and the way he's humble, the way he goes about things every day, and eager to be better, and wants to be a good teammate, wants to learn from what's around him. Um, that's what really the, the great players do. The crowd senses a homer every time he steps up to the plate. His senior teammates see him as an example to follow, even if he is younger than them. He's a good dude, you know, takes care of his stuff, keeps to himself, and uh, just a great person to be around, a great teammate. People learn from hard times and mistakes to get better in the future at anything they do. Murph Gray, on the other hand, has to learn from having an outstanding season last year. Gray says it's all about staying on track. We're gonna stay focused, get a job done. We're not gonna overthink anything, overemphasize anything. We're gonna work hard no matter what. But now everyone, including the team's opponents, know what to expect. There's a bigger book on them. There's a lot more at bats. Everybody's got video now and everything's documented. One thing that's certain is that Murph's future is far from the color gray. From Bob Bennett Stadium, David Victor, Fresno State Focus. You can catch Murph Gray and the Fresno State baseball team tomorrow afternoon at Bob Bennett Stadium against UC Irvine. Her first pitch is at 6.05 p.m. And that's been your Focus on Sports. Back to Natalia and Renee at the desk. Fresno State commuters, you are appreciated. The off-campus student life has been having a full-on week dedicated to student commuters. Monday, they kicked off with the Campus Resource Fair. They had free tacos, free swag, and many resources for students. This has all been happening at the Memorial Gardens from 11 to 1. The next event will be its last. They'll show the movie Ratatouille. Next week on Fresno State Focus, we'll show you the tips and tricks of tax season and what resources you have available to you on campus. Plus, the importance of the Peach Blossom Festival to the community and all of the students who will pack our campus over the next two days. Also, how to skip the line at food places on campus. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.